All right, now we're recording. I already know where I want to start. Because my whole goal for this live session now is to prepare us for 2020. 2020 is going to be a big year for us. Um, I mean, this is going to go down for us. This whole year is going to be amazing. And I'm talking about the amount of wins is going to overpower the losses if we do endure those but um let's get to the point i want to start with shaq the reason i want to start with shaq is because shaq has been beaten up um the setup is beautiful for long term i've been looking at a couple of things with these charts and i'm noticing a lot of things similar to apple what happened with Apple? Apple took a huge beating. I mean, the whole market did in 2018 of December, and then everything just recovered after that. We got Apple around 150, and Apple is now trading, what, 130 points later, right? And that was in January, basically more, more the beginning of January, end of December when we went long with that. So... This is Shaq. This is a quarterly chart. Quarterly ends in December 27th. To be honest, I'm looking for a hammer on this chart. If this can happen for December 27th, that would be awesome. I don't know if there's more downside here, but I'm going to take my chances. And from the looks of it, I see a repeat. And I'm going to show you guys a repeat and why I like this stock for long term. This thing was at 105, what, just a couple of months ago? Now trading basically half of that. Let me show you guys something. So this is the quarterly chart. The last move similar to this was what, 2018, end of 2018. And then after that we recovered. And look exactly where the stock is at from where we recovered, the 14 SMA. So my thoughts is in the next three weeks, are we gonna get more downside to test the 14 SMA, which is sitting at 51.41? Or are we going to hold 56? And if we do hold 56, that's going, to be so, that's going to be very good for us. And I'm looking at 70 calls for, I think that's March. We already started taking a position this past Friday. There was some good open interest, some volume going into there. Looking for a good ER um, next year to start the year off. Something similar. So the thing here is from last year, the beginning started with, um, Small range for the first quarter, second quarter, huge range, third quarter, small range inside. Then fourth quarter, still inside, bounced off the 14 SMA. Then to start the year off for January, off that 14 SMA. And for those three months, went from a low of 43.18 to a high of 44.66. Nope, I lied, sorry. 43.18 low to a high of 59.16. That's a 16 point increase for that quarter. And then the following quarter just kept taking off. That range was 15 points. Next quarter after that, that range was 37 points. And then the downside ending quarter starting from the top of 97.93 all the way down to a low of 57.47. Closing price last Friday was 58.99. So long term, I love this stock. We played this stock more than once. It's not the first time we played it. This is honestly, we played this many, many, many times. And so my thing is I'm looking to play this one weekly, not much weeklies. You only play weekly um stocks and fill the bottom is in just to get that week's um big move. Cause that's what happens. A big move follows when a bottom is, is in. And here with Shaq, we are calling a bottom on the weekly, but I still feel there's somewhat more downside. 56 is my target, but I'm honestly looking at positions to start in January 3rd, and then the following week after that, which would be the 10th, and then the following week after that would be the 17th. And so here, and for, going from here, so we have a, so I'm going to, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to base this, this candle off of last year's ending quarter candle. Last year's ending quarter candle was a smaller range, just 22 points, 22.65 points. This year is 
40.46 points, right? So looking at that, came as low as for last year was 40.67, closed at 45.42. So basically, in a sense, we can say four points from the lows, right? So if we wish to do that from here, from this quarter, four points from the low. The low is currently 57, 47. So four points from the low for that would be, what is that low is 57, okay. We'll be looking at 61 points. So we're looking at, I'm not, not 61 points, sorry. We're looking at 61. Me here, I'm looking somewhat at, somewhere in between here. I wanna see for this quarterly, candle to close either above January 19th first quarter I mean 2019's first quarter and 2018's um last quarter so I want to see a close above that and 2019's I'm um, 2018's last for the last quarter which is this red candle the closing I mean that's not the closing the high there was 63.32 so I want to see a close either above that or somewhere near that for the quarterly of this year then I wanted to see a candle. I want to see an opening somewhat around there as well. And then at least 80 for the first quarter. So if they basically, I don't know how next year is going to open for Shaq, but this is basically on a big watch for me. Fibs are, fibs are honestly perfectly matched. They're touching every single level from all time highs to pullback levels. Um, I'm looking for a 73.13 test. I want to see 105 by, honestly, second to third quarter. And then ending quarter, I want to see Shaq at 145.70 by 2021. And I feel like that is definitely possible. So going into this week, I'm looking at three weeks out with time, two points from current prices. That's the smartest thing to do with Shaq. Even though Shaq has two to three point weekly ranges, we need to focus on that. And it has a nice falling wedge. I don't know if we have more. It's going to keep falling. But I want to see, based off this weekly candle here, the weekly looks just like the 30 minute. So if I show you the 30 minute on Shaq, I'm probably rambling right now, but that's okay. doesn't matter. You guys understand me. This is what the 30 minute looks like. Okay, so they didn't do it for the 30 minute. They did it here. It was a Wednesday between Thursday, similar candle range, similar as the weekly. And then they pushed off from, what is it, 57 to 55 to 60. That was a good point. That was a good range. So here's a daily chart. Actually, let's go to weekly. That's my main focus. If we close above last week's close for this week, we're targeting 65.46 for next year. I'm not going to target that for December 27th. I'm going to definitely target that for either beginning of January to end of January. So January 65 um, would be the target for Shaq. I like this setup. I'm still trying to figure out where's the bottom at in this chart. Let me get us a range real quick. I'm going to use my um, retracements in between 65.46 and 56. Actually, let's bring it from 73.13 all the way down to 56. So we'll find out what the in-betweens here. It's the red bar. So that red bar here is 62.53. That's going to be our target. I'm looking at 62.50s for either December 27th, which would be smart. I like to, I like to buy strikes at resistances. Why? Just in case. I know, I know to sell those strikes at that resistance to either roll, roll up or roll down for puts or roll up for calls to roll out more. So there's going to be a vacuum happening on a weekly in the next four to five, possibly four to five weeks. And about four to five weeks, you got one, two, three. So this is no, actually December 20th of this year. 27th and then january is here where the candle will be at so by january i want to see 14 estimate at 7313 january around february that's where we should be at so i want to see us around 7313 i'm going to start taking starters and building a position on this one for january and beyond we already have the march 70s or is that may it was may or march give me one second 
because after January is March. Yep, it was March. Because they report, I think, February, if I'm correct. But I definitely see this one breaking back out and retesting um, all-time highs by next year. So Shaq is at the top of my watch list for bottom. I feel like we got the bottom in. Daily chart looks more constructive. It's more clear. 1430 SMA, still resistance. It's like similar to BYND. I mean, I don't even have the chart BYND for us because it's, it's basically the same. Um, consumer stocks is where it's at right now. We got the sector rotation. A lot of people are sleeping on it. Like we got McDonald's. McDonald's, I see us at 200 possibly by next week, if not this week. I want to see BYND close above 60.05 this week. If we can at least test 62.53 this week, that would be very bullish. But I'm not going to take 62.50 calls for this week unless it's the lotto size. But I want to see them, see them continue to build below 59.28. The more they build there, the better. Any pullback from there would be actually good. I'm still in the falling wedge. That 30 is going to come all the way down. And when that 30 comes down and that 14 crosses that 30, it's, it's definitely time to get long. Taking the 6250s and, it's, and the 6450s with three weeks' time above each. So January 3rd, 6250s, and then a week or two after that, 6450s. You can do all of those trades by tomorrow or even by Wednesday this week. So keep that in mind for Shaq. Shaq is at the top of my list for a core play with, long t with time. Because another thing I want to show you guys how I justify leaps. I don't even have to use quarterly. I actually use monthly to justify leaps. So I'm going to show you guys the monthly real quick. So monthly, you have all time high for Shaq is 105. I don't have to be like to the point. Well, okay, we can do that. 105, 84, right? And basically it's cut in half. So this is the monthly chart. I want this to be uh I want this to be somewhat of an in it's gonna definitely be an inside monthly um candle. And then I want to see us go up in January to to near 70. But definitely testing 66.55 by January, which is going to be the 30, um, 14 SMA on the monthly. We're actually trading in between the 14 and 30 right now. And then I want us to build up and get back over 83 by mid-year. If not by end of year, somewhere near all-time highs. So when you take somewhat of a 50% cut from all-time highs, the best time to buy leaps is basically when you take that 50% cut. So highs is 105.58, right? Let's say you now we're trading at 58 right now. Here, I would take the one, actually, I would take 80 to 90 call leaps for 2021 here. That would be the smartest thing to do. So January 21, 80 to 90 call leaps would be the smartest thing to do. Um, You'll be sitting on some cash. It will take time. I mean, like I said, I, I wouldn't, check it as often i would check it at least once to one to twice a month or check it every time there's an er that's the smartest thing to do so that's shack next up is anet anet was moving pretty weird this week i'm not even sure what's going on with that one right now but it was moving pretty pretty weird i like the monthly chart the reason i chose this stock was because the monthly gap all gaps fill. The question is when. And if you buy time on this stock, is you're not set up for failure. You're actually set up for a good play when it pans out. So the smartest thing to do is buy the gap resistance. And the gap resistance for a net here would be the low of what is the October's monthly low. And October's monthly low, you're looking at two fifteen twenty six. So you would play either January, ending of January 215s, or you would play beginning of February if there is a February um, weeklies or monthly strikes. I like this. You're going to call it even, like they say, a megaphone, depending how you play it. But I like it here long. This is definitely a long play for me here, targeting 248.31, possibly by mid-year. So I like this. I like this. I like this trade a lot. And this is a candle combo monthly. So if this closes inside monthly for um, December, January is going to be explosive. We should definitely see two fifteen by January, if not two nineteen sixty eight. 
So Ana is definitely on my radar and we have to definitely have buy time for that one. This one needs a lot of time. Has a vacuum that's needed on the weekly, which is 215.62. That comes down to 210.85. And have another nice inside weekly. I like, I like red, I like red weeklies, then green weeklies inside of that red weekly. Should follow through when we I want to see us at least test that third week. What is this? Uh 1125. The high of that week was 199.20. So 195 calls for this week. I'm watching and 192.50s, 192.70, um, 50 calls for the following week after that, just to be safe. It might basically reject that 210, come back down, and then starting for the new year, take off. This is still in a bull flag, or you can call it a descending channel as well. I'll give you guys a visual. Lines up perfectly. That's your flag there. Next up, we got Guild. Guild has been paying very, very well, long term, short term, depending on which. If you have equity, um, basically commons. If you have commons, that's great. If you're playing options, buy time. We broke above the 14 and 30 SMA finally. This was back um, 1125 following week. We had an inside, and then now we're still inside on the weekly. We need to hold above this 14 SMA on the weekly chart. Um, any move below this, expect a hammer. So if we come down this week, wait for a bottom to be set. Anywhere, any support. Actually, we're going to actually draw support so you guys get a visual. Because I have my long term on Fibonacci extensions. So 6420, you want to see a 6420 bounce if that happens. So if we break 6511, expect 6420, and then we take the 6450 and 65 calls if that comes by Wednesday. Take them for Friday and next week's, and then 68 calls for January. I love the way this is setting up. This is setting up very, very good. ECL looks like it's going to take some time. Weekly, uh, not much of a fan yet. It's still inside. So my thoughts is, and this is, these are one of my favorite setups, falling wedge, not just that. It's how the candles are set up. And if you look here on this weekly, I mean, what stands out to me is the 14 and 30 SMA. There's a vacuum due. That's my, that's my biggest thing. But when I see somewhat of hammers and spinning tops inside of a green bar or a red bar. Let's say, let me get uh, my, let me annotate this. Give you guys a visual. So here's a green bar here. You have a hammer inside. You have a spinning top somewhat inside. Here, I'm not gonna lie to you, I would prefer a gap down to 183.76. Any gap down to 183.76, or move off of this level here, I would go long 185 calls two weeks out, which would be uh, 1227. And then I would take those 185 calls and also the 18750 calls for two weeks out. Plus, I would take January 3rd 18750s as well, because this is the red bar. This is basically where everything has been rejection, rejecting here. 14 SMA is setting for 190.58. That's going to come down somewhere around whatever level this is. This would be around 189.20-ish, whatever this is here. So a vacuum possibly will happen within two weeks. The ending, the ending of the year, December 27th. So to play this range is going to be, it's, you have to buy time on this one. And you can play the weeklies, but... For a net, I'm, no, for ECL, I'm looking at playing at the money or near the money. If you're playing a lotto, play only on Wednesdays. Smartest thing to do. Next up, we got CCL. They report this week. Hold on one second. They report this week Thursday. 
nice falling wedge broke out out that wedge i mean this this stock makes me sick it doesn't make me sick because of the setup it makes me sick because of what i've done but um i'm looking for if we do get that bounce off of 46 40 and then a crazy move to 50 and i, I like i told you guys the 4750s for january and the 4750s for december 27th plus the 50 calls for january as well Next year, I have a feeling that crew stocks are going to be in. And I'm looking for 6181 ish, possibly 2021 for um, CCL. So this, this would be a good leap also after they report this year. I want to see 5329 by mid year or by April and then targeting 6181. So this is going to be a nice long setup. And if that was the bottom here around 3951 ish, then we have a nice long setup to go. And if you look at leaps, January 21, 63 calls, not, not even 65 calls. You can even take the 6250 calls. 6250 calls are 80 by 90 cents. You sit on those for, we can even map that out if you want. So that's January 21, reset, change calendar, just January 20. Let's say January 20, no, actually, let's go back. Let's say December 18th, the price is up 30 points. No, 25 points. Might be more than that. So let's say by December 12, 15, we're at 72.45. 72.45 by December 15th of, oh, actually, this is 2019. I am bugging. I'm so sorry, guys. Oh, this is right. Okay, here we go. Oh, yeah, still good. So December 18th, 2020, a 25-point move for the year puts us at 72.45, puts the stock at $9.95 per share. And my target for this year, I mean, it's not even going to get up to that much. I mean, that, that's, just, that's very steep. I mean, 61 would make more sense than anything, but it depends on how it does this ER. So 61.81 to 67.80. So looking at that, so if I was to do leaps, no, these actually would make more sense. 6250s, yeah. 20 point move by then. Looking at the monthly. Monthlies give you more of a better clue than anything, to be honest. This monthly has a four has 49.91. So we're possibly gonna see 49 this week if not next week, to vacuum to. And then in about four weeks to five weeks, we're going to hit the 30 SMA, which is around 57.51. So that happens. If this is the bottom here for the year, we're definitely going to see 55.85 going into the end of the year, possibly 59.61. So that wouldn't actually be bad. We can actually look at even a – this January test, January 15th. 21, let me see. Nope, the smartest thing to do would be take the January 21, January 22, 2022 calls for the 70 call. Those are actually the smartest thing to take and sit on those for you. Sit on those. I'll probably buy a ton of those. Yeah, I'll definitely buy a ton of those. Can't go wrong. Next up, we got Knock. Knock is definitely another one. One of my favorites. I love knock. Like we say, knock me up. Monthly, monthly is very constructive. I was thinking the monthly is going to come down to the 30 SMA, but it has not yet, or the 14 SMA yet. It's kind of flagging. So goal here is 348.98 to close above. So monthly candles, when they close around, the, what is that, December 27th is a Friday. We open up. The following week in January. So the smartest play for this one is to play 348 calls weeklies going into the new year. And then the 350 calls for January and the 360 calls for after for end of January. All-time highs is definitely in view. I want to see all-time highs in the next two months for this stock. I'm targeting 47 40, 473. 70 or 45 
450 next year. Those are my targets for this stock. And it has been very conservative. Every year that it breaks out from a low. So if this was to pull back, it will possibly pull back to 319 and then break up to 400. But I like this chart a lot. And it's forming a nice flag plus a handle on this cup and handle on the monthly chart. We got to get over 348.98 and hold above that. We get above that. Next target above that would be 360.52. So keep that in mind. BKNG, another one. I mean, this one has been paying very well and has done very well as a core. And it will remain a core until it stops paying us. The reason I love this stock is because it's, it's, it plays very well. Still hasn't closed gap fully, but it's getting there. I want to see one more, at least one or two more upside days. And then I want it to pull back again to the 14 and 30 SMA. Or at least bounce off of that 1950 and then retest 2000. This red bar to 2020 is very important. So we need to get above that. We're going to do a retracement from red bar to double yellow. And this is what happens when you do a retracement inside of an extension. 1990 was the top for Friday. And look at this, the top. That's what extensions and retracements do when you put them together. Now we need to hold 1960.49, a bounce off of that, retest 1990. So if we do get back down to 1960, I'm looking at 1990 weeklies would be smart. And then I'm looking at least two weeks to three weeks, um, 2020 strikes. But this definitely needs to pull back a little bit. Bikenji has been very, very strong from 1861.37. We caught that right there. And now we hit 1990. Basically almost a hundred point move. You can actually say a hundred point move, definitely. We got big. I mean, this one is just an animal. I want to see a bio on this stock, at least 45 to 50 dollars. But it's gonna be the stock, it's gonna be one of those retails of 2020 in my book. So much core activity for January and December. December 20, um, December 20th, I mean, closes this week, but there's a lot of core activity in January, and it's at the money, near the money too, as well. So watch that. Targeting 49.58 next year. So keep this one on radar. Leaps on knees for, let's see what leaps look like for these. They didn't even go that far back. That's January 20. Let's look at January 21. That was 22 I was looking at. January 21 would actually be smart. These leaps, the 50 core leaps look smart. I'm going to actually add these. I like these. The 50 core leaps for January 21st. I mean, January 2021. That's a full year. And we're targeting 49.58 red bar. Red bar can come very easily. A break out of, and it's already breaking out, out of this um descending triangle, um, this descending channel here. Targeting 31.10, then 35.46, bounce over 31, and then break above 35.46 and target 49.58. There's going to be a lot of resistance at 3948. So if you wanted to play this one very safe, take the 40 calls. They're trading at 190, so you have time on these. So that's basically almost a 20 point move. And you get that by what, end of year 2020? That's money. How about 10 bags? So for now, that's exactly what I wanted to go over. Not too much. I mean, like I told you guys, I'm actually going to go over McDonald's. I want to get on McDonald's as well. Consumers is where it's at right now. Why I chose McDonald's to play this Friday and two weeks out 200 calls? Because of the 14 and 30 SMA. McDonald's already has started to break out. 
And by breakout, I'm talking about 14 and 30 SMA. I'm not talking about support or resistance. Support and resistance to me is the 14 and 30 SMA. It's easier for me to read. 196.86 needs to hold, targeting 198.49. Above that, then we're within somewhat of the gap and target 205.40 by January. And if you want to draw a trend line, you can do it from the lows and bring it all the way to here. So this will be the line that it will bounce off of to get the 205.40. And we have an asymmetrical triangle in the works too as well. So 198.49, our resistance, plus we have our rising trend line here that I just drew. We need that break above 198.49 to get a continuation and then bounce off this trend line, create a, a handle, and then break out to two, well then come to 205, 205.40, which is basically where the gap starts. Fill gap to 206.91, pull back. To the trend line again and continue up. This is gonna be an interesting rising triangle. I wanna see if I can draw it out though. So it'll be something like maybe this week bounce right back one more time, break out to here, resistance come bounce off of here, <laughs> going into the next year, retest, come here. And then we come up here. If it doesn't break out first attempt, we'll come back down here by the time where, depends on where we are. And then we'll come up here, break down there, retest resistance, shake out, and then come up to here. So 213 around March. So doing something like this, a visual like this in a sense, it gives you an idea of how to buy time for those that don't know how to buy time. So if I was looking at McDonald's, February's, I'm looking at 20, 210 calls are pretty, pretty freaking cheap. And at 220s, I mean, you can do those as a lotto. They're trading at 33 cents. So it gives you that time, it makes sense. As long as this rising trend line doesn't get violated on the downside and it stays intact, you can play this based off of calls. You can play, you can play this on the long side. Another consumer stock, of course, BYND. Also, um, I forgot who reports this week that you guys need to watch. I forgot who is that. No, that's not, it starts with a C. They report this week, another um, consumer stock that we used to trade back in the days. I feel like BYND has one more retest before it actually breaks above the 14 and the 30. I think they want to get it as tight as possible before anything happens. Smartest play for this one is short below 71.49, long above 82.58. Right now, this is going to stay mutual. It's going to be direction is... There's no direction. It's, it's basically trading in the channel right now. Red bar, it has a red bar at 7563. So we need to test 7406. If it bounces off of that, take the 75 calls for this week as a safety. That's only one point away, and that puts us in the money. And it closes above that. We want we need we need to close above 7817 on the weekly. Once we get that, it's time to definitely go long. But so far, it's you gotta swing this one. 